lights come in lots of different flavors in in blender so the default scene comes with a point light this is it here and you can change all these properties about it so we can change the color let's do that now we have a very different scene just changing the color we can change the power you can buy lots of different light bulbs we can change the power here really easy so we can bring it down to five watts very low or a thousand which i think was what it was default okay don't worry too much about these yet that's a simple light but it also has the option of a sun wow what happened there we have a sun but it's got a massive amount of power so the default for the sun when you enter blender gives you a thousand so you definitely know the sun's on when 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 you when you change it up that's usually overpowered for most scenes so i like to use the sun at about five it's a good starting point and the other thing about the sun is it has an angle so you can change the length of your shadow depending on what your angle is and the direction of your shadow let's go to your spotlight so this is what you would think a spotlight would do G to move it it's got uh, you can aim it you can use it just like you would a spotlight on a stage um, it's very low power now because we turned we had the Sun on recently so let's change this up to 500 and you can see we've got our spotlight maybe a thousand because it's quite dark there okay so you can see you have to play around the power depending on the source that you're using and you can see the different things the point kind of got a, a, a an omnidirectional so it's casting light in all directions the sun is going to behave like the sun in the sky it's going to have a direction uh, an elevation and, and a direction to its shadow and then this is your spotlight uh, i guess the other cute thing about the spotlight is you can change how much what the size of it is and how diffuse or sharp it is uh, and the last type of light I actually end up using these quite a bit is an area light this is kind of a mixture of your of the other ones and what's useful about an area light is it tends to be quite diffuse so let's put it at a power of 5000 yeah you can see it it lights very uh, diffusely and this one you can change the size of so it's literally a shape casting a, a light um, and you can change the shape so we can have rectangles we can have a disc ellipse whatever you want choose away and like everything else you can change the color um, let's change it to 100 can see how, how underpowered that is compared to the sun spot so you will have to trick around with these quite a bit to, to get the right look for your scene uh, for rendering and remember we are in the render mode here if we go to viewport shading you see all that information is lost if i change And now when we're in the material preview, you can see we can see the materials. We know this is yellow, this is blue, but there's no lighting information. This is useful if you have very complex scenes and uh, your computer is struggling. Uh, this is the best way. This is the mode you can set most things up in. And then when you want to see the final look and tweak around the lighting, this is where you go. There is one other thing to know about lighting is these lights are behaving this way under a set of rules and those rules are dictated by the render settings and you can get to your render settings here okay 
This is your render and this is all the information about your scene. And currently we are in the default when you open Blender and start your scene. The default render engine is Eevee. And Eevee I like to think about as a very light way of rendering. So what I mean not I don't mean light as in shining shining brightness onto things. It is not that it's a, a simpler way of calculating the light for the scene. So that means that to get a scene to be lit very well in Eevee, you have to tell Eevee a lot about the scene in order to get that light right. Um, because it's using a lot of shortcuts to calculate uh, the, scene, the lighting for the scene. So there are actually two other render engines available. One is Workbench. Uh, which we're not going to talk an awful lot about it is the simplest render engine in terms of calculations and presentation of, of objects. The big heavy lifter in Blender is Cycles. Cycles will give you the most re realistic render that Blender is capable of. The downside of that is it is very memory intensive. So you have to balance that. So right now, if you've loaded Blender for the first time, the default is that your CPU will be chosen as the device to render with. If you have a graphics card that's compatible, go to GPU and it will speed things up immensely. So you can see the difference there between using the CPU and using the GPU. It's a lot faster and smoother. Um, it still takes a little while to calculate everything and present it in the viewport, but it is getting faster and faster. It will give you a much more realistic scene. So if you're going for realism, you end up usually having to, to opt for cycles. Okay. So the last thing we're going to do today is we've done all that work, created something. Let's try and render it. So how do you get an image out of Blender? Well, you're going to use the camera. So whatever's in the camera view is what you're going to see. And like every object in Blender, you can move it. You move it by going G, it's wide, it's selected, and then you can move it around the scene. So your camera has uh, some information associated special to it. So like the object had materials and this information, the lights had information particular to this. C camera has its own specific set of information uh, one of the things is the lens perspective, which we're not going to touch today. Focal length, 50 millimeter is fine. It's default. These are all the default values. Let's talk about these modes again. So this is our viewport shading mode. So it's very light. A very easy way just to quickly see what's going on with your objects. This one here is really to be used for um, material previews. So if we add materials to these things, then we, that's how we can view them. Um, so it's used because it doesn't actually fully render the object. You get some information, but not all. And this is all the information about the object. So um, it's been influenced by everything that's in the scene, including this light here. And to show that, if we want to move the light, how would we do that? Think. What, what's the shortcut for that? So it'll be G, grab, and then we can just, once it's white highlight, we can move it around. And you can see the object shadow changes depending on where the light is situated. Okay. So this is our default scene. So we've ended up with a default material, a default light. Let's change that. Do a material first of all. Everything's very gray. And that's because this object has no material. How do we add an object material? Over here. Okay. This is our properties panel. It holds all the information about the object that's selected. Okay, so let's see how that works. We have our cube selected here. All right. And it has no material. So this is the Material, material properties. So we're going to add a new material. Just hit new. And now 
Blender has populated that with a whole ton of options for this material. Don't worry, we're only going to use a small number of these and we'll push all the other information out to another tutorial because we just want to be able to set up a basic scene here. So let's do that. Now we have material on the object, but it hasn't really changed very much, has it? It's actually the default material. Let's just say we want a blue material and go over here, change to blue. Actually, we can change it any color we want. We go blue. That's our base color and we've added it. And that material is called material one. We can change that because it can get very complicated if you have a lot of materials in the scene. But let's change that to blue. All right. Good job. Now. We've created that material, it's sitting with that object, but in truth that material is available to be placed on any other object as well. Let's see that. This is our default material, our default state for our, our plane. Let's give it a material. Um, but we already have a material we created for this, so let's give it the same material as the cube. So let's go down here. And this tells you all the materials that are sitting in your scene available for use. And we have our blue material. And now we have two blue objects in the scene. If we move our life around, you can see. Looking good. Okay. Um, but suppose we want a different uh, color for our plane. Well, we can do that. What we can do is get rid of our blue. It's gone. So hit negative. But we want to create a new material for this, so we go new. It's given us all our default options again. What color do we want? We go yellow. It's not yellow yet. We go to our base color and change it here. Now it's yellow. So cool. Now we have a scene with some objects and materials. If we look through our camera, what does that look like? There we go. Looks good. Suppose we want it to fill the area and we want to move this object so it fills the camera scene. So our camera is defined this area here, but we want this yellow over here. So in order to move this, okay, I can use G and just move it, but you can see it moves anywhere. It's not very precise. Let's go back to where it was, Control Z. Let's think about what we want to do here. We want to move this to fill the camera area. One way we can do this is we can use the G, but we can also constrain the movement to a particular axis. We want to move it along the x-axis. The object was selected by G, and then we have typed X, and now it's locked into the x-axis. If I move it, if I push it anywhere, cursor, the mouse cursor is moving all over the place, but you can see it's limited to moving. Okay, so we got it moved, but it's still not filling it. So we want to resize it. Can you remember we hit S to resize? We've got our arrows here indicating we can change the size. Let's do that. Nice. Okay, and then this cube. Okay, it's sitting at the center. Suppose we want to move it up to the top. We want to have it actually sitting on the plane. How do we do that? Let's select our object, hit G, and now we want to move it on the Z axis. So to do that, we just hit Z and you can see we've got our Z axis vi visible here, the blue axis. And we can move that up. And now our cube is sitting on top of our plane. And we controlled all that and we can do that from any, any view. We can control RZ. And you can see it's locked to that axis. So that's really useful if you want to move items around and uh, don't want them moving anywhere you don't want them to move. So just lock them in. Okay. We can transform the object and we didn't really talk about that menu, but that means that every object uh, has this information associated with it. Blender knows its location, everything relative to the origin and it's rotation and we can rotate. So you can go in here to Blender and rotate the objects. So 
to rotate is R. And everything rotates around that origin. All right. And you can see the numbers are changing here as I rotate it. So everything is rotating around the origin. So I can move it here or here. Sometimes it's more precise to go up here and move it. So the way you change the the um, the item is just click on it and pull your mouse left or right. And that should increase or decrease. So left click, pull left or pull right. And that will rotate your object. Or you can just type it in. Type in zero and it goes back to default zero. That's our default scene. Um, similarly, you can transform your object. What does that mean? You can scale it. Remember we S and we have our arrows to move it back and forward. And you can see here our scale is changing here as well as here. This is all the information Blender has on the scaling of the object. So like that, we can go in here and change it. Right click and then move it left and right. But you can see we're only scaling on the X axis here. Let's change it back. If we want to change everything together, highlight everything and then you can type it in. So now everything is scaled at the same scale. If we want to go backwards, we'll go here. You can do this. You can highlight it and then scroll left and right. So just hold this and hold, hold your left button and scroll down through the set of digits and then go left or right and we can change the size of the object. Or you can do it for each individual axis. Right. Similarly we can rotate on the Y axis on the X axis. If you're not happy with that you can just type in each one and we go back to our default. Similarly, we can change the scale back to zero. So you can highlight all of these and type in. So everything gets the same value. Our default scale is one. And the default is two meters. So when you add something in, that's what it is. So supposing we want to add in another mesh. So we've been playing with the cube a lot. Another useful one is the icosphere. And you can see when we add it in, it gets added at the origin. We want to grab it, G. Move it along the x-axis, x, move it along. And remember, it's at the origin, so it's half up, half down here. So if we want to move it on the z-axis, you can come in here and just go left click and then move our mouse right. So that's it. And by default, it has no material. We can add it to a material to it. Just go here, we have our blue, our yellow, our white. Let's go yellow again. Okay, that's our icosphere sitting in our cycles rendered scene. And this is our camera view. So if you want to move the camera, you can do the same thing. This is most useful for the camera is we can move it on the X axis, the Y axis, z-axis and we also have a rotation so this will move it up and down on the x-axis y-axis trippy and z-axis and if you want to go back to the default there I'll go there and just let's try and get everything in the scene I'm going to move it up a little bit. That's it. Okay. Suppose we want to render that. I mean, let's get this X plane, G, X axis. Move it along. There we go. This is our scene. We're going to render it. We're rendering in cycles. Uh, we have to tell it where, where, when it renders where, where it's going to go. So the default format is 920 by 1080, which is... Uh, common screen size and um, we don't need to worry about frame rate because it's not an animation it's a still scene so we don't need to worry about this we're on frame number one 
oh yeah by default when you open blender it opens with this timeline so it sits down here in order to move windows in blender you just need to get uh, grab the uh, edge of the window and you can edit it up and down so right now we have two windows open you can open a third window let's do that just go over here and as soon as your mouse reaches the edge of the window it'll turn to a cursor and then just drag it over to the right and now we have a new window okay let's do it again there's another window if you want to close those windows just grab the edge of the window Usually it's the larger window into the smaller window. So let's do that again. So we want to close this window. Once you get that arrow, you can collapse the windows. Over here we've got the cursor, move it in. Go up here. Click on it. You need to right click on it and then we have our scenes. Right click, there we go. Okay, zero. This is our camera view. So we need to specify where this file is going to end up. This is more important for animations, um, but if you do want to, you just uh, find the location where you're going to save your uh, your file. Uh, type in a file name and go accept, and that's where it's going to end up. For instance, in this case, I'm going to let's go Oops. So now that's where our render is going to go. Blender will render in a number of different formats. Bitmap, PNG, JPEG, Targa, um, OpenEXR. And these are for, these are still, and these guys are for animations. So I usually render a PNG, and this is what it will actually look like when it's rendered. In order to render it, you can go up here, and we're going to render an image. Click that or just hit F12 and that will render the object. It takes quite a while to render and that is because we're in cycles and I have a very high uh, setting for it but it's fine because it's a still it's rendered quite and it's got simple things in it it's rendered quite quickly so it took nine seconds to render. The settings for rendering some of how, how the light is handled is, is in, hidden within these panels here. We're not going to go into them today. We will go into them down the road. But I suppose the most important one to know is when you're rendering, uh, we have two, two uh, settings here. One, the viewport. So that's what we're seeing right here. Okay. And we've got max samples. So if I pull the sample number down to 50, it should resolve the image quite quickly because I'm asking for a lower quality sample, final sample, but it means that it resolves quite quickly. Um, if I go five, let's do that. So if I do this, you can see it settles very quickly. If I do a thousand, you can see there's a bit of lag between my movement and the final resolution of this, the scene. So we'll leave that at 500 or something like that. Uh, similarly with the render. Okay, I, I rendered at the highest max samples there. But if I pull the samples down to 120, go back to the scene and hit F12 to render again. So the last time it was nine seconds. Now it's five. So you can see with how that, and that works okay for this image because there's not a lot in it. But if you have, lots of complicated things happening with light in your scene then 
the lower the samples you choose, the more chance you're going to have artifacts and problems with the scene. So you have to, and the more optimization you'll have to do on that scene to avoid all those problems. So that's where all these settings in here uh, become really, really important. But for simple scenes, no problem. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good introduction to Blender and, and hopefully you'll be able to get in, add some simple objects to your scene and um, move them around and render them. Make sure to hit the subscribe and the notification buttons and you'll be uh, up to date with whatever comes next. Thank you for following along. Oh.